when mankind was looking skyward to space, uh, there was one great journey on Earth still to be completed, the first crossing of a continent, the first crossing of Antarctica. It was a great expedition, a journey that was the dream of Shackleton. He didn't even manage to land on the continent. Uh, his famous endurance expedition, his ship sinks, it turns into a struggle for survival. So by the 50s, this great challenge was still unanswered. Men from many nations come together to, to mount this fantastic expedition. Um, George Lowe, the photographer, the veteran of Everest, really managed to achieve some remarkable visuals. There are all sorts of lovely photographs in this book. I, I think one of my favourites, to use a modern term, is, is this selfie, a South Pole selfie. George Lowe finally gets to the South Pole in 1958, January. Uh, he's met at the pole by his, his best mate, Ed Hillary, who has come from the other side on a converted tractor. And this photograph is that moment. Just after this photograph is taken, Ed gives him a big sack of mail, all this sort of fan mail and letters from home, in the bottom of which is a letter from the HMRC, the uh, income tax demand. So as well as original photographs, we were able to shoot a lot of the original equipment. So this is a spread of his photographic case. It's a battered leather case that he actually ran over a few times. At night he'd sleep with his cameras so they wouldn't freeze. Sometimes he had to thaw out his cine camera over a primer stove. So what's nice too is not only do we have all of the shots from the actual journey itself, but before the journey they overwintered in a hut spent four months in total darkness during the polar winter. And during that time, George is processing and developing many of his photographs. There's a, a lovely shot here of uh, Gordon Haslop, the pilot, getting to grips with a, a woman that they've cut out from a magazine, kind of early Antarctic Photoshop. It's really hard picking my favorite images. This is a particularly nice spread showing the old and the new. We have the snow-capped tractor and these prodigious amounts of fuel that they had to drag behind them to, to complete the journey. They were reliant on aircraft support and various other new technologies to enable them to do it. And I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people sometimes say that this expedition didn't quite have the heroism of, of say, Scott and Shackleton. And I would argue against that. Antarctica is the coldest, the windiest, the driest, the most desolate, a land of superlative difficulties. So this was, despite being quite technologically advanced, was still very much uh, a story of hard effort and labour across a very hostile environment.